We're back in Brittany this week, and I'm taking you to a very special location that has both an on-site cidery, a tasting room, a souvenir shop, and a museum that really showcases the history of French cider making, and in particular, the region of Bretagne. Hey, 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 my name is Rhea Wincaller, and I am the producer and cider MC of this weekly podcast, where we speak with makers, cider enthusiasts, and folks within the cider trade from around the world. Welcome to Cider Chat. If this is like your first time coming on to this here podcast, you might be listening to this episode years from now when it was first released, or maybe you re- you're listening to it the week that it was released, which will be May 18th, 2022. And with that, I want to say we are right in the middle of blossom season where I am located in my special spot of Ciderville. And best of all, the humidity has now broke and humidity is just, oh, it just drags you down so heavy. But I woke up today with a new skip in my step and just digging the outside weather. I had to put on like a little extra layer. I am so happy. Uh, and so are all the blossom trees out there. You got every kind of fruit tree just like cranking right now, the dogwoods, the magnolias, and the apple trees and pears. And yesterday and a couple days ago, I finally got into the ground the peri pears that I had grafted, I think five years ago now. I was trying to do the math. I think it was 2017. It could have been 2016 even that a bunch of us got together, did a big grafting party, and I had gotten some scion wood from some magnificent peri pears at my little favorite orchard. New Salem Preserves, or also known as New Salem Hard Cider, which, by the way, is now open for the season. They're open like every single day of the week, which is incredible. Pouring cider, you get to sit outside, look over the magnificent orchard, out into another view where you could see the water known as the Quabbin Reservoir. Anyways, I digress. It's beautiful out there. And I took cyan wood from the big old peri pear tree out there, and it took... It took, and the little saplings have been going wild. Unfortunately, I had them in my own little, you know, in-home nursery, which was a big mound of dirt in the front of my house that sat on top of the septic system, which obviously you're not going to eat any fruit that's sitting on top of your septic system, but that's not really the problem. The problem is it's on top of the septic system, the tank, which is like a concrete box. And you know ever want to be growing trees or, you know, really deep rooted kinds of uh, plants on a septic system. So I am equally thrilled that they have finally left the premise of that area. And um, well, not when I say left the premise, right? They haven't because they're still, you know, kind of close by. And now they're in their big old hole. And um, I was able to dig into the ground where, where I am There's a piece of land that at one time had been a farm and the soil there and the soil everywhere around my property is super, super sandy. You might get some like little cobblestone, but some of it is just sand that's like perfect for like ocean sand and not great for many, many plants. You have to bring in a lot of topsoil, but this particular area that I've been clearing for a couple of years now, but now r- really recently, I've been out with a chainsaw just about every single day, it seems like since January, taking down trees. And yes, I do my own chainsawing. Um, I was just so stoked to be able to plant there because when you dig into the soil, it's black. It's like really rich, black, beautiful soil. Oh, And that's because... It's right next to where there was a barn and they had all the cattle graze there for, I don't know, you know, 60, 70 years. So they were going around poop, poop, pooping everywhere. And in this flat level area, 
it's it's really nice now because my neighbor came by, saw what I was doing, and he said, you know, you want me to come by? I got, I'm going to have my big old tractor this weekend, and I could stump it for you. So I was like, hell yeah. My goodness, that was fantastic. And we stumped it and cleared it out. I still have a lot more to do. And, you know, that's always the truth, right? But now I finally have the peri pears in, and they're big. I mean, they're big. And they came out of that little spot over the septic system area. It was really easy. Uh, I thought it was going to be kind of a, a burr of a job, but it happened really smoothly. Super stoked about that. And the reason why it worked, I believe, is because I had them in plastic pots that were then embedded into the, the topsoil that was there. So when I pulled them out, there were just a couple of little feeder roots that were going outside of the bottom of the plastic container. And I was able to kind of dig along and pull them out. But the main area inside that tub, the root was going around in a circle inside the tub. So that was really nice. It stayed contained and there wasn't much damage to the roots. So far, so good. And now they have the forever home and they got some fencing up. I was able to stake them, give them water and dig in an area where I think they had taken all the extra manure from the cows. There's all these mounds. This, this land's so interesting. It has a lot of history to it. So there are all these like mounds here where I think they, you know, are just dumping the manure. So I dig in there and that is even richer, darker soil. And so I was able to layer that into the big hole and it was so easy to dig because there's no big, heavy rocks, which, you know, I guess you want that schist, you want some granite, you want some of that soil, but I just have a feeling that they are going to love this. So I have my peri pears, I have some apple trees, I have the medlars, I have the quince, and sorbus domestica. So it's a complete talking bomb experience, which just makes me um, just thrill to walk about and to hang out with all these amer- amazing, amazing fruits. And um, it just brings me joy. Now, I'm not talking about like a big orchard. You know, you got a couple apple trees, you got a couple peri pears. You only really need one Sorbus domestica for, you know, what I do. And um, boy, but those guys, they grow really quick, I'll tell you. And um, I'm going to have one more Sorbus domestica a little bit closer to my house. So, Yay. (laughs) That's my show and tell, which brings me to a little bit of an email that I got here from Canada. So I'm going to take a little pause and I'll be right back with that. I've been getting a flurry of emails ever since it was announced that reservations are open for the French Cider Tour. A lot of the emails, of course, are from folks who are signing up, having questions, and, you know, just like the buzz, you, you know, you could kind of feel it's like a not that far away. September's coming quickly. I know we have a whole summer ahead, but you know, when you're planning for a trip, you just start like researching the area. You start like daydreaming about it. And it's really fun when you get to do that with a whole bunch of other people. So it actually extends the trip longer. It's not just like that one week that you're in France because it's the build up to that. It's the suspense of it. It's kind of like, dating in a way, but not because it's not a date, it's a different kind of date. (laughs) And then of course, you know, I do this with all the folks who I've been on past tours with. In fact, some of them have written to me, you know, wanting to come on this one, you know, they can't necessarily do it, you know, just a couple years later. But the, the, the post experience, you know, of just being able to share that and go over it and having those friendships that you build, it just extends the entire experience. So that's been a ton of fun. And of course, I've also been hearing from people who say, I want to go, but I can't. And these are the reasons why, <laughs> which is really sweet to hear. You know, I'm, I'm so sorry, you know, the folks who really want to make it, but they can't make it this time because all of a sudden there's a wedding on that weekend. Total bummer. But, you know, it's a nice time of the year to have a wedding, too. Anywho, this leads me to this email that I received from Grant, who is at Devil's Orchard up in Canada. And not only does he have his eye on, you know, apple cider, right? But he's also making vinegar. And so he wrote that this Sunday is my first day selling my vinegar at the Picton Town Hall Farmer's Market in Picton, Ontario. And that's super cool, Grant, super cool. And he said then that the apple orchard is slowly coming along. I hope to get a few apples this year. Mr. Quince is looking pretty good. 
and he writes in um, you know parentheses, he's the only Quince in the orchard. I always address him as Mr. Quince. Well, what do you think about that, Mr. Quince? You know, folks kind of like calling their Quinces in their orchards Mr. Quince too. I love it. And I would like to say thank you, Grant, for growing Quince. We are really watching a renewed interest in Quince for fermentations in as a standalone drink or as a blend in with cider and cooking quince too. Oh, it's so exciting. It really is. And and it bodes well for the future, doesn't it? Indeed it does, Rhea. Everyone loves quince, don't they? And I do know that there are a number of trees that are also called peri pear. <laughs> yes, there are peri uh, because, I mean, that's what we call peri pear trees. We call them peri pear. Indeed. And people have been calling their trees peri pears for quite a while, oh. haven't they? Yes, Perry, they have. Uh, and, and they, you know, everybody loves you too. Yes. Yes, they do. Me too. That's nice, Medlars. You look, everybody loves the talking palms. And I just thought it was really cool that Grant was writing about that. Should I, should I finish the letter? <laughs> Please do. So Grant just finishes with that he was doing some grafting this weekend to start new trees from a couple old mystery apple trees, and they taste fantastic. Keep doing the amazing job you do. And, you know, when Grant writes that, I feel like he's talking to all of us, both myself and the Talking Palms. Yes, I think he is, Rhea, and I want to say hello to Grant, too, and I hope that he says hi to the peri pear trees that are in his orchard. Well, he didn't really mention that he had any peri pear trees there. No? Hmm. Perhaps he forgot to write about that. <coughs> Shall we move on? Yes, Mr. Quince, I think we will. That's a good juncture. Let's take a little pause here and I'll be right back. For those listeners in the Southern Hemisphere, I hope your apple harvest is going well. As far as I know, it it begins around April and extends into June. And some of you in Latin America, in the Southern Hemisphere, you know, Australia, New Zealand, you might already be starting some of your early ferments. And if you aren't there yet and you're looking for a particular yeast profile, will allow me to introduce you to a provider of that known as Fermentis. Now, Fermentis is a sponsor of Cider Chat, so that should tell you a lot right there because that means that they're really committed to the cider community because they know what Cider Chat is doing in terms of promoting apples and cider around the world. And therefore, they are on the same page trying to do the same and help provide cider makers, both commercial and non-commercial, with the best tools possible for fermentation. So whether you're working on a balanced, sweet, fruity, or crisp cider, Fermentus is the obvious choice for beverage fermentation. And now they are offering an ever-expanding range of cider yeast. And coming up in June, I am going to be recording an episode with a technician all on yeast from Fermentus. So This is your last call. If you have a question about yeast, you're hearing this podcast and you know, you have like a little bit of time right before June, you could send an email to info at cider chat regarding any kind of yeast related question or fermentation question. And we'll put that in the queue, which is pretty cool because you get like right in there, but you know, you don't really have to wait for this episode. These folks are really willing to help and you can find out more by going to Fermentus.com, and they'll help you find the right yeast for your favorite cider. Walk into the orchard. It's nice any time of the year to walk in the orchard, and particularly right now in May when this here episode is going live. By the way, this episode is number 320 of Cider Chat, and we are in season seven, which brings me to our featured conversation this week on the podcast. And once again, as I said earlier, we are in Breton or Brittany, which is in France. This area is located south of Normandy and it is an amazing cider region in and of itself, a little bit different than Normandy. 
If you listened to last week's episode, and I really encourage you to listen to that, where we're visiting an organic cidery, also in Bretagne, that that cidery is owned by Arnold Jeunet. We're going to be visiting Arnold on the September 2022 French Cider Tour. And then we'll be going to this cidery that I'm featuring today called Ciderie Pre. One of the cool things as you're driving up to the cidery, there are apple orchards, of course, because it's right on site there and exquisite views. And there's one particular view out a window that looks down the lane of apple trees and out to this church steeple. I posted it in 2020 when I was there, and it's probably the most liked photo I have on Instagram. I'll be posting it again so you get a look at it, but yowza, that's just breathtaking alone. And there's a couple components here of this particular cidery. Not only are they producing cider, but they also have an on-site museum called the Musée du Cider, and it is fan-freaking-tastic. It was founded by Jean-Yves Pré and his wife Janine in 1987. And as recent as 2018, it has expanded and updated. So as you come down the little promenade, the driveway, you enter, and in the center courtyard is this old cider mill, one of those circular cider mills that would have been horse-drawn. You would have thrown all these apples into the circle, and a horse would go around moving a giant wheel, and it'd be squashing up the apples, and then the apples, apples would be taken into a cider press. So that's right in the center display. And to the left is the tasting room and a souvenir shop. It's really beautiful because it's super old stonework. And I remember the ceiling in there. It was just absolutely breathtaking. But what we'll first be doing when we arrive is we're going to be going into the museum. And that's what you're going to hear me talking about as I'm going in there because I was absolutely wowed. The photos alone that they had in there, like the black and whites of the history of the area, cider makers, not necessarily related to the family, but the region was just breathtaking. And then there was a whole piece on the different varieties of apples. So if you are like an apple aficionado and you love history, this is super cool room to be in. And (laughs) this also blew me away. Talk about like parallel universes that happen. There I was looking at one of the signs, and what did it say? Palms in art. Now, here we are going on two different levels in the universe, and Karin was setting up this museum with palms in art and had different still lives. Some of the people that I have talked about on this very podcast and featuring palms and art. I just love that. That that was like, I'm coming back here. <laughs> that was an immediate, I'm coming back. Talk about parallel universes. And again, if you're not a regular listener to Cider Chat, you might not know this, but I am way over the moon for palms and art. It's one of the things that when I go to museums, I look for still life with apples, pears, quince, sometimes medlars. You see it everywhere, and it just makes a museum visit so much more fun. I highly recommend it if you're going with someone to the museum, like me, I'm into museums, but I I could kind of get bored. So I have to have like a reason, a, a, a goal to do that. And thus, Palms and Art makes it so. So that was super cool. So you're in that room and then we're going to be going, I didn't even realize, I thought that was it. But like I said, they expanded in 2018. You go around the corner and now you go into this big expansive room that overlooks the whole production of the cider on one side. And then you get this feeling, it's a little bit, uh, if you've been to Nava in, uh, in Spain, in Asterias, you'll see the Nava Museum, which is beautiful and magnificent. It reminds me a little bit of that because they have a big, giant, old-timey type of uh, cider press, and then a lot of displays, and then the views. It's just stunning. So that's where I'm going to take you to give you a little taste of what it's like to travel there. Uh, We'll be heading there this September. I'm going to have a link in the show notes to the September Cider Tour. We are going to be closing reservations on May 31st, so time is closing up on this. And I just hope it really encourages you to to not delay on this. I mean, think of it. Here we've lost somebody like uh, Jean Ives. He passed away just a couple months ago. And that's kind of what sometimes happens if you don't seize the moment. 
life kind of passes you by, and boy, have we learned that these past two years. Anywho, and by the way, you're going to be hearing myself, you're going to be hearing Pamela, who is both our tour guide and my colleague in France, she'll be on the the French cider tour, and also Karine. Avril à septembre, comme beaucoup de structures, je pense, dans le coin, ouais, hein, c'est assez, ouais. euh, assez saisonnier. Ouais. Donc là, ça fait ça. Nice, because the museum has been closed like for low season, for like five months. Oh. So she opened it just for you, actually. Oh, merci, so she's pourquoi? like, uh, don't really look at the d- dust and so on, ouais. because everything is a little bit mixing. The... Ouais. Oh, c'est en mars, l'opération, yeah. no. nettoyage. Uh, ouais. no March is going to be like the washing. Uh, the of course, washing of course. Month. And then the opening time is going to start from April. So yeah. Okay, right. April to uh, September. September. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, can Can you tell me uh, how old is this? Alors, estate? les bâtiments, ils sont à peu près hein, de 1850, 1850. 1850. Oui. Uh, et mais um, on fait du cidre. Alors uh, depuis uh, cinq cinq générations. Uh, So, uh, cinq, uh, fifth, fifth generation. Fifth, fifth gen- generations in your family. Oui. Uh, alors, uh, avant, donc ce sont mes beaux-parents. Okay. My parents-in-law created okay. this okay. museum in oh, the, uh, wow. 1987. Wow. Her husband and her step-brother uh, mm-hmm. uh, keep on doing the oh, uh, cider. Mm-hmm. Moi, je suis arrivée uh, plus tard, il y a un peu plus de dix ans maintenant. R- well, uh, since the fifth generation, they have been making cider, but mm. just on their own. They mm. were not selling it. Um, oh. Her uh, stepfather's uh, parents, I mean, uh, started to sell it. Mm-hmm. So they have been selling, oh. it, selling it since two generations now. Mm. Wow. Her husband and her step uh, brother mm-hmm. and her step parents. Very mm-hmm. good. Oh, going to enter the museum part. Oh, okay. So it's a museum and that's the store on that side. So to your right is the museum. Ancienne. So it used to be a stable for the... Oh, for horse, the horse. horses. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And voilà. you come in, you get to see we some traditional tools. Since last year, so before, like the um, um, uh, making process was like a few meters away from here, but it wasn't here. And since last year, they decided to put the making process with the making factory right here. So people coming here can visit the museum, the chai and the... uh, Le chai, on peut le visiter la cave? Non, par contre, la cave, non. Ah, so, they, like, they, it's not possible to visit the chai, but uh, it's possible to visit the um, uh, producing mm-hmm. factory. Ah, avec donc 44 variétés différentes. So, these are the varieties. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they are all oh. the varieties. So, 44 varieties are mm-hmm. here, here, and actually, they have like a conservatory. Right oh, here right. at the entrance of the museum. Oui, yeah. Yeah. Ouais. So, do people um, locally, do they trade? Like in the U.S., there's a lot of scion wood clippings, and Et people si trade and Et the help. Les, uh, alors, juste pour uh, être uh, uh, je crois que les, ce sont des greffes, à mon avis. Je oui. pense qu'elle est en train de parler de ça. Oui. Uui. Uh, the Conservancy, so, uh, I, I take, oui, like, elles something elles here. Oui, elles ont toutes été greffées. Elles ont été greffées à la création du musée, donc en, en 87. So, yeah, they have been, mm-hmm. uh, I don't remember the word, uh, they have been t- to protect the variety and to make right. sure... Right, and to, to put it on another tree yeah. and... Mm-hmm. and for new farmers, mm-hmm. they're able to produce and then share and and keep that going. Um, so is the conservancy, how is that used? Is that a feature? It's to keep the really old oh, variety. Okay. okay. So um, are these all considered old varieties? Or? So most of them are like local varieties. Okay. So for most of them, you won't be able to find them in Normandy. Normandy but yeah. but some it. of them, well, the thing is that different it's names. what she was saying. Yeah, right. you can find some right. of them, but they have a different name. <laughs> so 44 varieties here. Uh-huh. And these, that oui. says a list Griffé. of the varieties. Griffé. So Griffé, it's, graphs. Uh, yeah. Graphs, uh, mm. all grafted right. in 1987. Uh-huh. Mm. When they oh, okay. Uh-huh. Perfect. So there are uh, three full-time employees here, um, and they also raise, well, they also have cows, which mm-hmm. means that they have the cider part job, and also the mm-hmm. the, the, the vaches laitières, oui. oui. and oui. the milky cows. Oh.
Yeah, but it's it's good to show how wide. It's a very nice display. You really, mm-hmm. um, sh- sh- you know, from where is the origin of the palm mm-hmm. and moving on. It's it's a very educational. Why? Well, well, well done. Wait, wait, well done. And I can't even read it, but I could kind of understand it. So Allez, that's justement, la pomme est large. <laughs> wow, look at that. So ah, this, is, this is the palms in art. Look yeah. at that. Yeah, it's what she just said. But I put in yeah. art. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Bacchus and then ah, and Paris. Super bien trouvé. Cézanne did so much of the still life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Claude Monet, you, you know, like uh, yeah, impressionism, like in Normandy, uh, it's like the, je sais plus comment on dit berceau, it's like the where impressionism was born. So, like, right next to, in Honfleur, for example, it's one of the capital of Impressionism. Monet used to be, like, in Honfleur, in Honfleur yes, and used I to be in Giverny. That. You know Giverny? Yes. So, this is where he used to live. It's in Normandy as well. Wow. It's really nearby here. It's an organic farm, mm-hmm. so they don't use any of those, mm-hmm. uh, like... Um, Pesticides. Pesticides right, yeah. Yes. So sometimes, like those animals, insects can they come. get in there? Yeah, it's very difficult. That's a very good display. Mm. Alors après, on a la chance nous d'avoir c'est de la pomme à cidre, mais la pomme à cidre est plus costaud et plus résistante que la pomme de table. Okay. Yeah. But uh, she's saying that uh, at least they are really lucky because they just deal with the cider pomme. Uh, which is more um, com- uh, str- resistant, yeah, resistant, resistant right, strength. compared to like the the one we eat. Yeah, the skin is like more um, thin, Str- thicker. Thin, yeah. Et puis nous, euh, tout est euh, broyé, pressé, donc on, on s'en fiche qu'elle soit jolie, qu'elle ait une belle, euh, qu'elle soit bien ronde, qu'elle ait une belle, euh, un, be- un, un bel aspect en fait, yeah. peu importe, puisque nous tout est travaillé. Hein, donc, ouais. euh, And they don't really care about the shape of the apple because they press the apple. So mm. you know that nowadays we talk a lot about the ugly... The ugly cider. apples it's make the best cider. cider. Yes. <laughs> so yes. she's saying that even if right. our fruits are ugly, we don't care because right. if right. they taste good for cider, it's the most right. important. So smart. Due to bad weather, uh, sometimes like the apples get even more like smaller. Mm-hmm. And she was saying that, for example, two years ago, they were suffering from... Um, Warmth, warms, 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 yeah, warms, yeah, warms. when it's really, really Flowers, warm, uh, fro- 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 when, when it's really shiny, frost, frost, no, frost. frost. last Two. year they were suffering mm-hmm. from frost. So mm. the flowers got like really Small. frozen. Oh, well, bad. actually, they didn't get any because the oh. flowers got frozen, oh. mm. so they were not able to collect we, it. And it last happens. year, for example, they were uh, out of uh, cider uh, in August. And uh, uh, like they just work with, they just produce their own. Uh, well, they just, just use their own, own fruit. Mm-hmm. Right. So when they don't have anything left, well, same thing mm-hmm. in the U.S. How, oui. how, how about this year? Was it a good year? Yeah, this year is a, a good, good year. year. Oui, cette année, oui. Good, good year. Yeah, très bien. Mm. Oh, in here too. This is a huge museum. Ça, c'est la nouvelle, So we just came into another room. You come into the front room off of the courtyard where the degage is, and you're coming into a number of uh, presentations on the wall. You can understand about the apples and the apple varieties and this beautiful redone stable. Then you walk into another room, and there's another degage inside. You could get up close and seating where you see a multimedia presentation and a movie in a much larger barn. You're able to look into the bottling area that they are, because they just recently moved their production facility over here. Still many artifacts from the past, uh, barrels and different tools being used, uh, beehives that you could see, different um, blockage that might be used with the apple trees, photos of family from the 1850s when this family here five generations ago started. It is accessible from what I could see. It's like a nice ramp kind of coming up or stairs and there's just these cool photos of history that you know you just have to come here to see. This is a really uh, spectacular museum. It reminds me a little bit of like the museum in Neva where there is 
a lot of spaciousness to walk around, not as big as that. And then you come around the corner, you come to a room, you look out, you see the apple trees in the distance, and you see the almost like a cathedral uh, down in the distance from the apple tree. A really old press, a wooden press too, that gives you a size and dimension of what they were dealing with back in the day. I mean, original presses, they were just putting on stones. I mean, boulders, like little mini boulders to weight down the press. And then they kind of, well, scaled it up to a a, a screw. And um, yeah, it's really the La Pressière. It's giant, a giant, giant beam. And there's a barrel at the end and more artifacts. It's a really cool place. Highly worth your time to come out here and visit. While in the museum, you're able to look over the production area for the cidery, or what Pamela interprets poetically as the transformation. I just love that. It's it's absolutely poetic, isn't it? And exactly what happens when you take apples and ferment it into cider. It is a transformation. Beautiful. We also talked about En Fleur, and she was mentioning earlier on when we were talking about palms and art, about Monet and how Monet would go to En Fleur to paint. And it is an absolutely exquisite city. That's going to be our first evening in Normandy on the French Cider Tour in that beautiful harborside town. It, the harbor itself is flanked with restaurants. It's absolutely gorgeous and the lighting is surreal. And we're staying in a very centrally located hotel right up front with cobblestones. Absolutely delicious on so many fronts. And then the next morning we have some time to like just spend time walking about the little harborside town there and enjoying it perfectly lovely and yet another reason why you do not want to delay if you are sitting on the fence right now thinking should I sign up for this French tour can I do it can I make it happen well do know that reservations are closing at the end of this month of May so hopefully you're listening to this episode soon enough so you could sign up now and come along with myself and Pamela and a bunch of lovely people who are coming from all over the U.S., both commercial makers and cider fans, just like myself, to just drink cider and enjoy the food, the sights, the sounds, and best of all, the people. And there's a little bonus at the Cidery Pre that we're going to be visiting on this tour. They're going to be serving us some galettes. Now, if you don't know what a galette is, and then you are in for a treat. It is essentially a very fine crepe. Uh, of course, the French are well known for crepes, and they could be both a main course or a dessert crepe. And it's kind of folded in a particular way and always very savory. It's quite traditional to have cider with a crepe in France. It's a, a very classic way to have it. And why not do what is classically done when in France? I'm not going to argue that point. And I'm absolutely delighted that they wanted to serve us galettes on this particular visit to Saturday Pre in Brittany. If you want to find out more about the cidery, go to the show notes for this year, episode 320 of Cider Chat. And if you're interested in the reservation page and getting more info on the French Cider Tour 2022, you'll find a link at the show notes there, or just Google ciderchat.com and look for Totally Cider Tours. And with that, I leave you here. This is Rio Wincaller signing off for now. Looking forward to seeing you in Ciderville. We like cider. We like palms. We love orchards and have
having fun There is a reason There is a reason why we do it like this Oh yes there is There is a reason why we do it like this Oh yes there is There is a reason why we drink it like this Oh yes there is There is a reason We like walking through the orchards Dancing in the streets Smelling all the blossoms Kicking up our feet We like cider We like palms We like orchards Having some fun There is a reason There is a reason why we do it like this Oh yes there is There is a reason why we do it like this Oh yes there is There is a reason why we drink it like this Oh yes there is There is a reason We like walking through the orchards Dancing in the streets Smelling all the blossoms Kicking up our feet Oh yeah We we like cider Oh yes we do like palms. Oh yes we do We love orchards Having some fun There is a reason There is a reason why we do it like this There is a reason why we do it like this There is a reason why we drink it like this We like walking down the orchards Dancing in the streets Smelling all the blossoms Kicking up our feet Oh, yeah. We like cider. We like palm. Oh, yes, we do. We like orchards. Having some fun. Yeehaw!